Thank you so much, Marcy. How are we doing on sound, sound team? All right. Rasa, how's your mic going? I think it is going good. Excellent. So we are thrilled to be here tonight, aren't we? Sure are. Oh, this is our first steps in the brand new Missoula Public Library. It is very exciting. Now, what did you tell me you would trade to be able to get into the Missoula Public Library? Um, My thumb and half my pinky. Her thumb and half her pinky. So this is going to be a little bit more gruesome than some people had signed up for. But no, we're going to let it go for Missoula Gives. We are here trying to help raise $1 million for local nonprofits over, I think, the next uh, 24 hours. I think we're now at the 24-hour mark. So, Do you know how many pieces of candy that could buy? Wow. Uh, I remember bazooka, I think was about five cents. So, uh, I think five, a lot, a lot, just the comics you would take forever. Swimming pool with it. Yeah. That will be Missoula's next bond project to fill a swimming pool with bazooka bubble gum. I think that's a good idea. So for those who don't know us, we host a parent child podcast and public radio show called you must know everything. everything. And in the last segment of every episode, we always answer a vexing question submitted by listeners. So what are some of the example kind of vexing questions we, we answer? Well, we answer questions like, how many people can fit distance six feet apart in the state of Montana? Or why do bubbles pop? Or... The cats dream. Yeah, and cats do dream. The bubbles pop question is a little bit complicated, and I believe 113 billion people could fit in the state of Montana, space six feet apart, and that's not even counting the scaling up to the mountains. So if it seems crowded, uh, you know, we're just getting started. Now, the soap bubbles question involves molecules. Yes, stuff. molecules. They're always, you know, everything Everything I want to do in life gets spoiled by molecules. It's tough. Now, tonight, we're switching that vexing question segment. We are making it personal. Whatever is stumping you in your life, send it our way. And Rasa will give her advice with a few sprinkles of wisdom from me on top. I am all knowing. So the way to get that question to us is to put it on the YouTube live chat for Missoula Community FDN or on Facebook Live for the Missoula Community Foundation. So find those spots and start sending in your questions. We've got someone with the you remember how in life, like when you were 10, you really did know everything and then you kind of got dumber as you went along the way. You start forgetting things that you already knew. That's that's my problem. You start accumulating prejudices and preconceptions and stuff. So this is the exact optimum age for an advice columnist. And meanwhile, we've got two able couriers uh, right across the studio and they're going to bring your questions in the live chat, right to us. Oh, yeah. But I preloaded, I solicited some folks in advance, fans of the show, to send us their questions for you, Rasa. And half I made up, half came from real people. I'll never tell which is which. You can try to guess, but you'll always guess wrong because the crazy questions, of course, are the real ones. So, here we go. Question number one. Vexing question number one. Sandy on the slant streets wants to know, I like to dress up and I like to dress my cat up yes. in matching outfits. Maybe a seamstress. I don't know, a knitter. I'm not sure. Maybe a leather. This is amazing. That's Whoever wrote this is a genius already. But my cat doesn't like to get dressed up and squirms the whole time. 
who should have to compromise? So Sandy or the cat, who should have to compromise? Well, this is a very hard question because cats look adorable in matching outfits. Yeah. But cats are, well, cats, and they're not exactly the compromising sort. So maybe you could just sneak a hat on them every once in a while while they're sleeping and avoid it other times. You know, Sandy, I actually had a situation not unlike this, uh, following Ross's advice. I once saw a bike that was just so cool. It was a used bike. And I realized I really wanted this bike, but the bike was cooler than I was. And I said out loud when I got the bike, it's the bike I rode here. I said, I'm going to change my life to fit this bike. I'm not going to change this bike to, to fit me. So I, I think if I can interpret that through the lens of your answer for Sandy, you know, yeah, do a matching outfit, but match what the cat's got rather than have the cat match you. Uh, and maybe uh -huh. there's a maybe there's a bridge with the hats. Is that what you're saying? Definitely. Okay. Incorporate face paint into it and you and the cat can be matching without them being so grumpy. Yeah, if they shed, uh, you know, just the whiskers, will, it'll, it'll start to accumulate. So it'll be good. All right, so hopefully Sandy's got a good setup. If you've got your own vexing question, we're here, we're ready. Send it in the live chat. Next one. This is Brian in Overland Park, Kansas. So this is one of our podcast listeners, I'm going to strongly suspect. But who knows, Missoula gives, you know, you're allowed to give from anywhere, right? Okay, we're at, yeah. So you feel free, Kansans, to donate to Missoula Gives. What are the best ways for a person to stay warm while outside on a cold Montana winter day? Hmm. And keep it well, classy, okay? We've got kids watching this. Well, I think first, you should wear a winter coat. Number two, you should wait until your parents aren't looking, then grab a thermos and sneak hot chocolate into your water bottle. And number three, get a bunch of those hand warmer things and put them in your hands and your feet and your coat and in your hat. And then you'll just be warmed everywhere. That's that's beautiful. I, I like the image of the, you know, kind of hand warmer uh, encasement. The coat, of course, a classic. And the hot chocolate, uh, another, uh, another classic of sorts. I was trying to figure out how we could get a cat involved. But I don't know if cats and outside and cold Montana winter days are are a good Put a idea. Put a cat in your coat pocket, and then she'll just purr and keep you warm. Oh, okay. And the hand warmers is and the cat. Yeah, I could. Yeah, the cat like cats like warm things, right? Yeah, it should it should be you all right. You can bribe them with hand warmers. Again, follow the cat, Brian. We've got a similar theme, and I think Brian and Sandy. I mean, I don't know their relationship status either of them, but I think you know maybe uh, they might enjoy each other. Who knows? Okay, so. And there's a cat involved too. So there's always something to talk who about, even cats? though, yeah, who doesn't like cats? All right. If oh, we've got one coming in from the audience right now, it's being curried and we thank you. This is from Mark at Tell Us Something, one of the great causes you can support through Missoula Gives, and please do. When you give to someone in need, and I'm going to say this is you. I think this is specific. When you give to someone in need, what motivates you to give? What's the good part of giving? What's, what drives it? Well, I mean, I think that the reason to give is because if you give, because, you know, it just makes someone happy. And... That should just be a good enough reason in itself. I mean, what's life without happiness? Mm. And so just the idea of, if it's, even if it's only a dollar or two, just the idea of making someone smile and helping someone, it's a great reason to give. Sold. I love that answer. I don't have any uh, amendments to it. I don't even think I need to work a cat into it. That's how perfect the answer was already yeah it makes you happy it comes from your heart and making people happy and following your heart is the most meaningful thing you can do in life that's my 
poor summary of your own words, but that's about, about it. About it. All right. I like that a lot. That's wonderful. Thank you, Mark. And thank you. Tell us something. What a great cause. Dave from Florence, Montana. When is the best time? Ooh, this is, this is a very brilliant one. I might have even made it up. That's how smart it is. Now, let's see. When is the best time to get a milkshake at the Big Dipper? In the summer when it's hot or in the winter when there's no line? What is the strategy for ultimate satisfaction? Well, I think there should be a compromise. If you go to the Big Dim Dipper on a summer day, where it's not necessarily freezing winter, but it's not bright and sunny, there'll be a there'll be a very short line, and yet it'll still and yet it'll still be more fun to drink because it's hotter out. I I think you've never been to the Big Dipper in summer. If you think there's ever a point where there's no line, that's just that's just not true. Ah, cold rainy day. It's it's better than winter, but <laughs> okay. not exactly the most appealing. All right. Ice cream. So rainy. So look for look for a rainy day. Look for that 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 uh, corner season. I guess it is. Uh, love it. Okay. And I have my own theory. I think have I shared this with you about milkshakes? No. I think milkshakes are an, actually a winter food because they give you a winter lining. They give you that sort of uh, ah, you know they it, it it cools you when you're drinking it, but then it warms you because it adds to your sort of outer uh, packaging. You just need hot fun. This, this, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go add that to Brian's answer. What's the best way for a person to stay warm on a cold Montana winter day? Eat hot fun. Ha, yeah, I would say I would say milkshake, and then uh, you'll, are you'll it, it'll add to your outer inner inner outer coat. So on the live chat, send us if you've got your own. We've got another one from out of state. This is a kind of an environmental one. It's Gabby from Utah. What can I do about littering? I know I can pick up trash, but I can't just walk out onto the freeway and start cleaning up. So what can I really do? Well, one thing you can do is there is, well, one thing you can do is try to pick up trash if you just see it on the road. For example, if you're walking through a park and there's a can, pick it up and put it in the trash. Makes it a little better. You can also go to a river cleanup, which is a whole bunch of people and they get out and they have gloves and stuff if necessary. And they just clean up along the river. It's small, but it makes a big difference. I remember mom has a theory that it, you, you cannot float down the Clark Fork River without finding a flip-flop. Uh, it's just not, it's not possible. There are so many people's flip-flops that have fallen off. Yeah, pick up the flip-flops too. Yeah, oh, and we've got another one. It's just come in, it's just come in. Da, 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 da. All right, ready, Rasa? Yes. This is from Terry. What is the best way for kids to learn about money? <sighs> Thank you, Terry. Very good question. That is a great question. Well, I'd say two ways. Um, experience in the internet. <laughs> experience in the internet. So, I'm scared. You can learn about a lot of other things besides money, but go ahead. Tell me what's a specific example. I think obviously so, bringing a kid to Missoula gives. Why well, have money so you can support great causes? That's an obvious one. What's another? What's another? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, if you handle money, then you'll get better at it. So, and these things can be small, like maybe selling dog treats that you made or a lemonade stand. You just get better at it over time. And there's also a bunch of great kids games on the internet that help you learn how to manage money. Yeah, you just did one at school, right? It's like you oh, run yes. a cupcake store or something. Oh, yes. So you are owning a cupcake shop. And you go in your little truck and you drive to the store and you start with $50, and you buy ingredients, which costs money, and then you make the pizzas. And obviously the customers like more ingredients, but the more ingredients you have, the so more it costs. is it pizza or cupcakes? Oh, right, it's pizza. Okay, it's pizza, and what is the name of this game? It is called The Pizza Shop. All right, so look for The Pizza Shop, bring your kids, open a lemonade stand, sell dog treats, then, maybe have an allowance and, uh, have to pay for your own stuff sometimes, something like that. Yeah. 
in a pizza shop, then you just sell a bunch of pizza and it re and it takes away money for gas and water and then you earn the money. Well, this is almost too realistic. All right, uh, I like it. But there is also talking bunnies who have an addiction to chocolate. Okay, so it's not, okay, phew, I was afraid it was a little too realistic. So Terry, uh, watch your money and bring your bunny. Okay, oh, we got another one, we got another one, we got another one, woo! Oh, this is an incendiary question. Please do not burn down the Missoula Public Library, especially while we are here, depending on Ross's answer. Which is better, Rasa? This is a question from Dax. Cats or dogs? Oh, well, I think that cats are smarter, but dogs are more loyal. And so it depends on the type of person you are. If, you, if you're like, I don't want a dumb pet, then maybe get a cat. Cats are super smart. But if you're like, cats don't care about you enough, and get a dog. They're loyal. It all depends on a person's opinion. And personally, I like both. Of course, I'm partial to cats because we have two, but I think they're about equal. I feel like I'm the dog in your life, and the cats are the cat in your life. Does that sound about right? About right. And, and mom's the queen cat? Okay, I love it. Definitely. Thank you. Great question, Dax. We I think we narrowly avoided like a Missoula pet civil war there. Okay. If you've got more, send them to us in the live chat. We love these. And I want to be clear. Rasa, have you seen a single one of these questions in advance? No. No. You asked. They're you said, new. You said you, can I take I a peek? I asked and you said never. Never. I said we got it. You know, Very. this is live. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ooh, anonymous in Missoula. It's a little romantic. I like someone, but I don't know if they like me back. And COVID makes it hard to be in person anyway. Should I still reach out? And if so, how? Wow. <laughs> That's a hard question. I think that maybe, I think that, uh, yeah, you should. Better to know than not. And maybe you could like deliver chocolates on their door or something and just try it out i yeah. like that i say walk your cat you know at the cat walking park i don't think we have one of those but maybe your dog at the dog walking park you could try uh standing in line ahead of the person at a big dipper and ordering the wrong flavor for yourself and say oh i I accidentally got this one. I, I'm going to order my own, but I'm going to pay for this one anyway. Stock them until you can find their favorite flavors, then give it to them. All right. So, yeah, because it's not, stocking's usually inappropriate, but what it involves, milkshakes, free pass. You can never do anything wrong with milkshakes. All right. So, excellent. Excellent. Um, good luck, uh, uh, romantics out there. I like that. I like, get, get the clarity. I like that. That's good. That's also a good, yeah, anyway. Rick from Michigan, short question, and we can answer, I can even answer this one. Why are you not on YouTube? This is a, someone sent it in from the podcast. Well, hey, Rick, we're on YouTube right now. We're on YouTube Live. So yeah. it's happening. We're on Facebook Live. We're in the library live. It's all it's all happening at once, Rick. So you you saw it. It was your dream, and it's all happening now. It's very exciting. If you've got your own, oh, we've got another one. It's coming in for the guys. Okay, okay. All right, this, and I don't know how to pronounce this. It could be, this is from Fred and Larry, or it could be from Larry and Fred, okay? It's hard to know whose first name goes first. When should kids be able to use social media? Hmm. Wow. This is a hard question. I think social media can be a good place to interact and help kids socialize, but it can also rot their brains and stuff. Hmm. So maybe you should, maybe, I think it depends on the kid, but usually it's probably best to wait until they're old, like 15. Okay. So ancient, ancient kids. 15 years old, social media go time, and otherwise 
should the parents and kids do it together? I don't even know how you would. No, no, just just take a walk. Take a walk, everybody. Just take a nice walk. Hold hands. Fly a kite. Read and stuff. Read and stuff. Okay, right. Excellent. Okay, I hope that. I hope we. Yeah, I hope. I don't know if, if who's the kid in that, Fred or Larry, but we're glad for their 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 question. Thank you, Fred and Larry. If you've got your own question, send it on the live chat. Cade on the west side. I just bought a used car. I want to redecorate it to make it more personal to me. Do you think I should start on the inside or the outside? What should I do? And should I worry that I'll ruin the resale value if I ever try to sell it to somebody else? Hmm. That is a great question. I recommend starting on the inside and doing things that make it more decorative and yet you can still take down in case you want to sell it to somebody else. For example, you could make a bunch of palm pots and hang them as a garland throughout the car until it's a rainbow pom pom land. But then you can also take them down if maybe the person you're trying to sell it to isn't as enthusiastic about rainbows and pom poms. And I like, I'm in favor of audio enhancements to cars too, specifically a horn that goes like go go or, or, you know, yes. yeah. So you're a genius. I, th I think that would increase the resale value in most, in most situations. And it's nice too, because yeah, when people like honk too much, it's too much. And that's like one horn, you just hit it once and it's, it's going for, for like minutes on it. So that's good. Uh, and the resale value. Okay. You answered that. I think you did a great job. Wonderful. Oh, here's a Missoula gives specific question. And remember, if you've got your own, any vexing personal, social, geopolitical question, we've got the answers for you right here for at least a few minutes more. Here's one from Ashley in downtown Missoula. I have $200. I want to donate during Missoula Gives. First of all, that's beautiful. Thank you, Ashley. I love it. Oh, this is a good question. But there are so many great nonprofits in our community. Should I give all of it to one, half to two, or spread a little bit across 10 or, or even 20? Well, I think even a little bit makes a difference, but it'll give a greater boost if it's more. So maybe choose two or three to divide the money across. That way, it's still much more money if you were to divide, then divide it across 20, but it's also reaching more people. Now, you've heard the term fundraiser, right? That's what we're doing? Definitely. Have you ever heard the term friend raiser? No. Is so, this a thing? This is, this is actually a thing. I'm not just making this up. A Does friend? it involve cats and sparkles? <laughs> cats and sparkles? It, it, it can involve cats and sparkles. A friend raiser, the idea is, yeah, you're trying to raise money, but you're also just trying to build your kind of community for your organization. You're trying to build friends for your cause. So remember, even if you can only give five bucks, 10 bucks, that is still a new friend for that organization. And I think that really means a lot to people, every new person that comes in, and they can share their message with you. And that doesn't just mean them always asking you for more. It also means telling you all the cool things they're doing so you can spread the word. So yeah. what's better than friends? What's better than friends? So just remember, this is a fundraiser, but it's also a friend raiser. So if you're down to your last few dollars, don't feel bad about that. Know that you're, you're giving them friends as well as funds. So I wanted to add that two cents to uh, Ashley's $200. Okay, uh, remember, I'll just repeat, if you've got your own vexing questions, send them to us via the live chat on Facebook. Oh, one's coming down the fire pole right now. Thank you. This is from Molly. <clears throat> How much do you, Rasa, think Missoula Gives will raise this year? And do you have a favorite nonprofit? Wow, this is hard. 
Well, I think, what's the amount they're aiming for? Uh, uh, they say $1 million, but I, I'm going to bump it to 10 I'm just going to say $10 million. $10, well, $10 million, and, and that's cash. If any of these stuff's credit card, we're going to have to pay like 1%, 2% on that. So well, I'm going to say, uh, I think I'm going to say uh, 12, $12.1 million. Well, I think they're going to raise $15 million <laughs> and 67 cents. Okay, fifteen million dollars, sixty. And are we playing prices right rules? Where if you go over, you're out, or is it just closest to the right answer? Closest to the right. Okay, answer. Okay, so closest to the right answer. So uh, throw your own guesses in the chat. See you along. But remember, we called it twenty four hours in advance that the total is going to ring up, and you're seeing it flip right now. But keep it going. Obviously, if you've got like say fourteen million dollars, it'd be great to just pop that in right now. And then we just have a clear sense of the finish line. We're trying to get to, again, what's that number? $15 million and 67 cents. $15 million and 67 cents. Thank you. Great question, Molly. All right, and do you have a favorite nonprofit? It was a two-parter. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, obviously I'm a kid, and I really like kids. So I like Watson's Children's Shelter. Watson's Children's Shelter, great. And great. I really like pets and animals. So I like all the animal shelters. Yeah, great. And my mom used to work at a nonprofit called Mountain Hill, Montana, which helps young moms and kids. So I like them too. Okay, Mountain Hill, Montana, Watson Children's Shelter, everything animals, and we could probably add books and art, just about a bazillion oh, yes. other things. That yeah. too. Thank you all for doing the great things you do. It's just so cool. Okay, a little change of pace from Tim in East Missoula. Rasa. <laughs> I don't even know the answer to this. Uh, I mean, this is, a, this is an experience, not a device one. So, have you ever been in an eating contest? If so, what was the food and did you win? And I, there's a follow-up question. I'll just wait on that. Have you ever been in an eating contest? No, I haven't. You have this very wise expression that your father would tell you, yes. which is, in an eating contest, everyone wins. An eating con yeah, my dad used to say to me, an eating con he put his hand on my shoulder, an eating contest is a game in which both people lose. <laughs> uh, so either way, what is your dream? So throwing that wise piece of advice from Grandpa, uh, Carl, thank you. Dad, what is your dream if you had to be in an eating contest? What is your dream eating contest food item? And I don't know if you should pick something you love because you get to eat a lot of it or you hate because you're already sick of it. Hmm. I think I'd want those. I think I'd want to be in an eating contest with pickles because <laughs> I really like pickles and my mom gets annoyed because we just bought a They're new thing so of pickles. They're so expensive. They're like, you buy this giant thing. It's like $18. And then I And then Rasa just puts her arm in it. It's just like, it's like uh, the shark. They're forget, delicious. Forget the shark feeding at the aquarium. Just buy Rasa a jar of pickles. It's, it's literally instantaneous. I mean, they come home. And there's just there's just brine circling, you know, when I come back. You love yeah. pickles. And even spicy. We got spicy ones last time. I thought it would slow you down. No. no. You just drank like a gallon of milk afterward. Yeah. So pickles. Pickles. Are amazing. Pickles. I was I was thinking uh like popsicle, like a mild popsicle, because it's basically like water, but you'd probably you'd have to go to the It would be so cold. You get a brain freeze. And the sticks, you get splinters in your throat. Tim, clearly I'm I I'm a fool. Uh pickles over popsicles. Who knew? Um this is kind of related to the one uh we might have what we got Oh excellent. And remember, I I gotta remember to keep asking. Please. Share us your vexing. This is the time to get the right answer to any question in life from an unvarnished uh, source on the live chat and uh, YouTube on Missoula Community FDR, YouTube Live, and Facebook Live, Missoula Community Foundation. Mason asks, my little brother is driving me crazy. What? should i do well, and, we don't know, and, and for all we know mason's like 45 and his little brother is you know uh <laughs> like uh 
37 and a half. So just, just, just keep that in mind. We don't know how old this, this older or little brother is. Well, I think that... Yeah, stop loaning him money, Mason. No, sorry. Go ahead. I'm going to assume you guys are kids. And I think you should be nice to him, but also establish a separate space where you can go when you're tired of him. So you can play Legos with him or have fun, or dress up or whatever. But when you're tired of it, just be like, I am going into this space now. This is my space to go when I'm tired of you. But in nicer terms. And just hope he doesn't invade. I remember I remember reading a, a, the Buddhist monk, Thich Nhat Hanh. He, he said you should have a place in your house you call the embassy. So when you're mad or you're frustrated, you just say, I'm going to the embassy. And uh, you stay safe. So good luck establishing an embassy, Mason. Here is one, I think it's related to kind of Molly or, or Mark's question. That's kind of Missoula gives and giving related and generosity related. Say someone gives during Missoula gives. Is the warm, fuzzy feeling they get afterward good enough? Or should they also treat themselves with like a nice meal, a massage, chocolate? Lady Grizz tickets uh, or something else too. Is is the feeling enough, or should you should you kind of have like a little tip for yourself every time you give a gift to somebody else? Well, I think the happiness is enough, but I think you've earned gloating rights for yourself. So you can be like, I gave, I took this money and I gave it, and I used it to make other people happy. So just think about that and think about. Yes, you gave. That's good. Thank you. I love that. I, I had a teacher once who would, her expression was good on you when you did something good. And you're making me think she should get like a, maybe uh, you should get like actual stickers that are just like your good on you stickers. And it could be a butterfly. It could be a red dot. It could be Scooby-Doo. It doesn't really matter. But just oh, when yeah. you do something good, you like literally put a good on you sticker on you. Don't you like that idea? Yeah. Or you could have a little chart and you hang it on your wall. And each time you just need, you can put one of those stickers there. And whenever you look at it, you can feel happy. Oh, I like it. So you can also have a sticker chart. Yeah. You're never too, too old or too young to have a little brother uh, or a sticker chart, right? Uh, never. We might, we got <gasps> another one. This, yes. If, excellent. Wow. Okay. We've got some great, great question here. If you've got your own vexing question of any kind, send it our way on the live chat on Facebook Live or on YouTube on the live stream for Missoula Community FDN. Okay, it's Nevin. Hey, Nevin. I've got two little nephews, two and four. And I'm looking for summer activities to do with them. Got any good ideas for stuff to do in Missoula? Yes, I do. So one thing that is just fun for kids ages 1 to 100 mm. is bubbles. I mean, who doesn't love bubbles? Yeah. And... A really cool thing you can do, not quite sure how to do it, but I think if you, you can take some wire and shape bubble holders of your own, then you can dip them in the bubbles and blow bubbles that can be shaped like hearts, squares, squiggles, anything else? It's a bit like a hanger, I think, almost, or maybe it's a little thinner than a hanger. Obviously a metal hanger, not a plastic mm -hmm. hanger, probably, but thin wire, you can get a hardware store, or maybe you can do it with a hanger. Soap, water, and let the day take itself at that point, right? Definitely. Okay, so bubbles, great first suggestion. Love it. I've, I've seen people do it with string too. But like, anyway, giant bubbles, suggestion number one. Number two. Well, if you have balloons, if you're, and, if you're, and if you're gonna start at say, I don't know, 10 in the morning, you can write 10 o'clock on one of them. 
11 o'clock on one of them, 12 o'clock on one, uh, one, 1 o'clock, and so on. And in each one, you fill with a scrap of paper with an activity. Have a pillow fight, build a fort, have a handstand contest, build Legos, dress up, go to the moon. And at each one, when it comes that time, oh, it's 10 o'clock. Pop the balloon, <laughs> and then read This is genius. I've never TV. heard this idea. I'm just like completely besotted. I'm delighted. I love this. Who doesn't you, love popping balloons? Do you balloons? just literally think this up, or is this something you've experienced or seen in a book? No. Oh, I'm so, you see, Nevin, we would never have this in the world if you hadn't thought mm -hmm. it. It's almost like a fortune cookie balloon. So you write it, you kind of put in a little narrow piece of paper, you push it into the balloon, you blow it up, you write the time, and then you just, you rub your hands together and you're just so looking forward to the, the pop. You wait for okay. it and then pop, there's another activity. Oh, amazing. Okay. Uh, well, how are we on time? Last one. We're getting there. We got a five minute warning. If you've got more questions though, I say still send them away. Maybe we can pack another one or two. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> We'll just, you know, it could be lightning round if we need to. In the live chat. And do you have a third suggestion? I, I always feel like you need to have three for Nevin. What do you got? Hmm. So we got bubbles. We got balloons. Oh. Uh, I'm going to challenge you. Maybe a third B item. I don't know. Or you could, or whatever you're going. Don't, don't let me interrupt. Yes, I've got a third B. Okay. Now I'm getting, we're getting good feedback, I'm told. Also. Thank you, Nevin. Build a fort. Oh, a third B. Balloons. Oh, no, bubbles, balloons, and, and build a fort. Forts. Okay, okay. Because forts are amazing, and you can just go on and on with building a fort, and it's amazing. And this is the perfect time of year. The college students are just clearing out of town. There's about 17,000 old couches uh, lying around curbsides in Missoula, probably. So don't take the couches, but maybe take the pillows. Definitely. All right, excellent. Fort. We had a whole episode about forts. So if you're interested in that, Nevin, go to youmustknowevereything.com. Look at our forts episode, uh, you know, see how to make peace. All right. We've got a great closing question from Rocky. Hello, Rocky. Hi. One of my favorite ice cream flavors. Yeah, you know, we see ice creams used to come up a lot. Anyway, I'm, I, I'll just say I enjoy. We're very food oriented. I enjoy a Rocky Road. I also just enjoy rocks. So we, we, we love you both ways, Rocky. I love podcasts. I listen to them every day. How did you get into podcasting? And do you have any suggestions for someone who wants to get into the business? Well, that is a great question. We actually, it's a funny story. So when I was a baby, my dad found out that his wife was pregnant, my mom, and he decided that I must know everything. So he started taking notes. On every on spare piece of paper, he started scribbling. She needs to learn how to ride a car. She needs to learn how to make pizza. But then I was a baby. And then I was really busy. And I was old enough, but there's always that soccer game or Girl Scouts. And then the pandemic came and there was nothing to do. <laughs> it was quite boring. We had we had made a lot of bubbles, we had popped a lot of balloons, we had made a fair number of forts, and then step four. We decided podcast. why not start a podcast. Start a podcast. And so, so based off those things that my dad had written, I shared lessons with him. He shared lessons with me. We also read a poem, did a vexing question. He'd already done a podcast before and a spinoff for a book he wrote. And so he knew how to do it a little and got started. Put yeah. It on Spotify and just kind of spiraled from there. So, you know, just the way to do it, you make the road by walking, Rocky. Uh, just uh, put it out there, record something with someone or yourself and post it. And the way to get into the business, you know, for me, it's just been a long 10 year thing to get into the new Missoula Public Library. Mm -hmm. So I've reached my apotheosis. I got on Missoula Gibbs. We've yes. raised, I think I'm not, I'm not getting exactly the live count number, but I think it's $326,000. So again, we just need 
15 million. Yeah, we're trying to get 15 million and 67, and 67 cents. cents. So uh, just keep the good times coming. I think our hour with you is now at its end. Thank you so much for everyone who's giving all these great causes that yes. have created the community we know and love. Thank you, Rasa, for joining me and letting me be a vessel to share your wisdom. Thank you, Dad. Bring up the commercials.